Good weekend, all. I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF market wrap up, and this is for Friday. And we're now at uh, September twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. Wow, we're coming to the end of everything in September. I love it. Get into the real fall, which we're in already. But fall, talk about that word. You know, September is a fall month. What do I mean by that? It's a down month. So when you're an equity trader, you pull your horns back and you get you got to be nervous. At the beginning of October, you sometimes you do that. We've had October crashes in the market. But one of the things I always look at is in this bull market, when we don't get a five, six percent correction during the year that lasts in any way, what typically happens is in the last part of the year, the market tends to rally. We get that Santa Claus rally time. Past performance is no guide. I don't like some of the things I've seen, and I pointed that out to you on the daily charts. They're throwing out mixed signals, things they haven't done before by staying under uh, their 18-day moving average of closes longer than they normally do and dropping a bit further. So yes, there's been some damage, technically speaking, to the dailies, but we haven't shown the weeklies. So let's go to the weeklies and see what we have. When we look at XLK, our technology sector, you can see how the market's been in a correction. We've come just from the 160 area. This week we got to 150.35, so we've had a pretty good correction. When we take a look at the swing line indicator, and what the swing line does is you take this chart, and I created an indicator many years ago, and it's in all my charting software programs, where you look to see, do you have a higher high week, a lower low, an inside week, an outside week up or down? There's no secret to it. What I'm looking for is the traditional pattern that bull markets make higher highs, higher lows, bear markets make lower highs, lower lows, and nothing markets in some manner make a higher high and a lower low, and they wobble on you more times than that. You've got right here, what? If we take a look, the break this week was 150.35. You've taken out 151.21, so you have a wobble. You have the higher high, the lower low. Where's the support in the market? Each time this market is broken recently to the 18-week average of closes, within short order, very short order, the market has found its footing and turned back to the upside. You came down, you, that number's 150.104, you're $5 over it. So the same theory is working, and you have stepped out of trends when that's happened before. Nothing unusual on this chart. The resistance, 164 area, support, 151.04, momentum in the slow stochastic, what? Bullish, it hasn't lost a reading yet under the 80 level. Until that occurs, with a 79 reading or lower, you're buying the pullbacks in the market of the pros are, as far as I'm concerned, looking for a continuation of the uptrend. That's what I think is going on on the weekly chart. PAVE is a bit different. In the PAVE chart, we had hit the upper Bollinger Band a series of times there. What are the odds of going over and staying over an upper Bollinger Band? Well, going to it is fairly normal. Staying over it only 5% of the time or staying under it 5%. Now, eventually, what happens is the market does just what we see here. You get sideways action, and within that, it's like a spring in a chamber. It's winding itself up. In that windup, we develop a pattern called the psychiatry trade. It means I want you to look up the number of your doctor or your psychiatrist, have it handy because when it goes up, you'll say, why didn't it continue? And when it goes down like it did here, why didn't it continue? It's because it's not ready to. It needs to develop more of that sideways action to make a determination. Now, we know this is being influenced by uh, politics right now. We need to get the budget, the debt ceiling, and of course, the first stage of the infrastructure done. Politics at work, nothing's getting done. It will. Why? Because we run out of money, according to some of the different institutes, no later than October 26th, but many think it's that time frame beginning October 15th, and then the credit of the United States starts to get downgraded, we can't pay our bills, you won't get your social security check. It's happened before. 
You get your downgrades, you know what has happened. And what do our politicians do? They always wait to the last minute because they're inept. You heard my word, Republican, Democrat, inept. They don't know how to get along, take their differences and make deals. It's all or none, and that's where we're at right now. I still believe it'll get done, but at the last minute, and it won't be a good deal. They'll tell you it's a good deal because they're politicians. You can see I'm not nuts about politicians. I know I don't contribute. Higher high, lower low, market coming down right through here. Okay, I see a sideways action market. In the industrial sector, I've been bearish on the dailies for you. I've been bearish on the weeklies. On the weeklies, this is a cover short area. Why? If you go to our website under www.irapstein.com and you take a look at my education, it's right at the top, take a look at the Enhanced Bollinger Band course to learn about this. This is the first time in a very long time you've hit the lower Bollinger Band, and what do you do when you hit it? Take the course. In the energy sector, you would hit the bottoms through here. Now you have a market that's out of a what? Let's look at last week. Have we stayed under the 18-week average of closes in red? Absolutely. Talk to me the next step. When the market's under that, means the bias is down. I don't care if we have a pattern of higher lows and higher highs, which is what you had. The bias is down, momentum sort of drifting. The market came down, made a lower low, and then came right back up and stopped at the 18-week moving average. The reason is markets look for a neutral point. Moving averages give you, a moving average indicator is not a forward-looking indicator. It's not telling you where the market may go. Um, what it is, is an area based on things in the past. You know, you'll hear traders, and I, I crack up when I watch on TV, like today I was watching CNBC and Carter was on. Suddenly he's enamored with the 150-day average. Other times it's the 100, then it's the 200. So what he's doing is proper. He's looking to see which averages the market seems to be paying attention to. There are even services that do that, so don't get me wrong. But I, I want to make my life easier than that. But he, he has a good point. He's an excellent chartist. And as I look at it, the market's got a lower low, higher high, holding. I'll stay with the Bollinger Band and that 18-week moving average. That's your resistance point. The market was able this week to get up and finish at 50.90. The 18-week average, 50.89, it has upside bias. Not in an uptrend, but no longer in any form of a downtrend. Very important. Resistance, should it get some legs to it, all the way up here, but the first resistance is this 18-week, right where it went to. In SPY, did we lose the embedded reading this week? So I want you to look, and I, let's go back to last week. This week didn't matter, my friends. And that's what I try to teach in the enhanced Bollinger Band. You had gotten to the Bollinger Band course, you lost the embedded reading. The odds are super strong that the market is going to make a run to the downside. Now, you need the daily chart to make up the weekly, and the dailies were getting hit. So that means this puts into play the possibility that you're going back to the 18-week moving average. What do I think of the trend? I think the traders that follow me were out. No problem. They got out this week, right that I'm showing you, and that's the week of the 17th. They missed this aggravation coming down. I don't care if the market finished higher or lower. It's momentum trades. The momentum's out of this market. It needs to rebuild it for the long side. What the market did tell you is the bull trend on the weekly chart has not been hammered or hurt because the 18-week average is still holding. That's not true with emerging markets. They got under and they've been fighting the 18-week average. What they're saying is, as they've probed lower numbers, is they're going to respect the lower Bollinger Band, but there's nothing in a trend here. You seem to be caught between the lower bands, the 18-week average. When that pattern changes, there'll be something to talk about. It's not here now. And I know most of you that watch this are looking for the buy signal, so we'll stay with that, that concept. In GLD, 
higher high, but you've had a lower low. What are you trying to make something good out of? There's nothing there. And the market's been a failure over and over and over since May as the market has gotten to that number and not able to build on it in any way. What it's had zero problem with is follow through to the downside to at least the 100 day average. So the bias is still down in the market. Momentum is still down, but oversold. Oversold is a filter. It tells you, hey, am I looking to put on new shorts? Maybe I shouldn't be, got it? And I know most of you don't trade the short side, but for the pro that does, that's it. And for you, it's a sign, okay, maybe the downside's wearing itself out. That's how you have to look at it. In GDX, you still have an embedded reading. These numbers are all staying, watch this, under 20, both numbers, under 20, under 20, you got an embedded reading. So until the red line closes, what? Over 21, I'm even more bearish. It gets worse, not better. You just had a bearish crossover taking place. You're gonna have that when you reopen on Monday. What's gonna happen? The 18 week moving average of closes is gonna drop under the 100. It only needs 12 cents to do it and it's been moving easily more than that each week, and you had a big break week this week, the, that's what's gonna happen. That's another bearish scenario onto the market. So I see a lot of resistance up there, and I see a market that's in serious trouble. When we come to ARC, all the play is out of ARC. This was when the Reddit people noticed something very important. This is when they went away. Am I making sense? I hope I am to you. Understand what goes on in these markets. One of my favorite guys that I used to work with, Peter Elides. And Peter had in different cycles, the psychology of the cycles. I loved it. I didn't use that in my trading, but I loved the concept and I took it to this. And that's how you learn. And what I was watching is how this market was just drifting through here, and that's all you're doing. You have a market that's got the swing line up, the bias down, momentum down, you're going nowhere temporarily. Amazon, up here, I was saying to you, I think the bull trend ended in Amazon. I certainly did it, as you know, on the daily charts as we were talking. It's not about me calling it. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. I'm talking the general momentum here. And that was lost. Now, what happens with Christmas? Because you gotta start saying, mm-hmm, are people gonna come back to Amazon because of that? So we watch, what is the trend of the market? Ah, the trend is down. You still have lower highs, lower lows. You negated it going home because the market was able to close over the 18-week average and put the bias to the upside. Momentum is flat. Interesting market, I'd be waiting on it. Apple. Could I have been any clearer, if you're watching me each day, how much I disliked the new Apple 13, unless you are buying it for the camera, which is stellar, or more battery life. But to tell me that I've, I've got a 10 in my pocket, okay? Uh, my wife has obviously the new one because she spends the money. But to make a long story short, why would I go out and trade it in for that? I'm already reading about the 14 and that's got my interest. That seems to be where the changes are gonna come in, the big ones. Be it the operating system, the front touch buttons, how everything's gonna disappear, front facing camera a different way, a little dot in it. Everything I'm reading and it's got better processing. I'm looking at that one. So I already have saved my money and I will wait for that one to come out, but I'll bet that I'm one of the first on the list. If it comes out anything like what I'm reading. So you save your money a little bit. Well. Do you think I'm the only guy that saw that? I'm not the world's smartest guy out there, but I saw it and I'm going, well, what do I accomplish? There's no 5G to speak of in Chicago. They advertise it, but there's no 5G. Do you have 5G in your neighborhood? Really, do you have it? Okay, so now take a trip with your family. Do you have 5G where you're going? I'm not worried about that. All right, TLT, market made a top, 
against, and it's been doing it, against the 100-week moving average of closes. You can't deny that. Momentum turning down. Now we have a higher high and a lower low. You're still not under that 18-week average. And I'm not convinced that you're going to see the 10-year note all of a sudden back up to 175. It's at 145 going home. I think it'll have trouble 15, then 155 and 16. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think this thing's running away on people. And why do I say that? Because you were unable to close and get the momentum of the market. You got down, but not the bias. Not in love with that. DBA, you've had lower high. Well, actually, a higher high and a lower low, but now an outside week up. Uh-oh. Until you take out the low of an outside week in the week after or the week after that, it's a sign the market is changing its character. And that's what I think is going on. Momentum has been working down, and it's no longer overbought. So I'm definitely watching this. Now, this is the ag fund, and I'm watching what soybeans are doing and so on. I've got my eyes on it. So when you put it all together and you try to come up with what to do with these charts, well, that's where I want to step in and be the guy that you look for. Don't go away. Let me make something clear to you. I don't know what you do, but the first thing I want to look at in the morning when I wake up, I'm not just opening and reading. Where are the markets? The second thing that I do, okay, now I see where they're at. What's the events of the day? You most likely don't do that. I bring that to you in my morning videos. What are the reports of the day, where you're going, how they're working? The third thing I bring to you is what you probably really want to see. What does a chartist, instead at the end of the day as you're watching these chart things or you're waiting like this, okay, when's CNBC chart is going to come on? When are we going to see something on Bloomberg? You go right to me first thing in the morning, and in the morning I'm going to do the futures first. I'm recording at 5.40 a.m. Central Time covering all these markets for you. Why? The reason why is because the ETFs are going to be based on them and they're going to open up at 8.30 Chicago time. So you're looking at them, no, I'm not interested in the pre-market, I'm interested in when the market opens. I want volume, I want what's going on. For the little bit you get, or big volume on something that happened bad in pre-market, nah, the bid offer's not there the way it is when you open up the other way, at least that's what I believe. That's going to affect all these too. So I put the package together for you. So first thing, whatever time, you're, time zone you're in, by 6.30 Chicago time, you've got the morning futures video. I record at 9 o'clock in the morning in these. Why do I wait till 9 when it opens 8.30? There's too many government reports to come out between 8.30 and 9 Chicago time, central time. I want to cover those. So I then record, and 30, 40 minutes later, typically, maybe 50 minutes, you got your... Uh, video out. It takes me a few minutes to see the report, do the chart numbers, get them all out for the people. And that is to me what's the important part. That's how I want my subscribers to wake up. That's the advantage they have over sitting there and waiting. Oh, what does the chart think? You know, so many of you don't work with brokers. You're looking, where do I get my other idea? I guess Reddit's your spot. Mm -hmm. uh, I can go on and on. You know, I'm not knocking quality. I know quality. So if you're interested, you're getting 48 videos a month. You're getting during the week five morning ones on futures, five on the ETFs. And on the weekend, you're getting one of each that are weekly charts. You put it together with the package. It's pretty cool. It's not expensive. Commissions are free today. How frugal do you want to be? Go to our website. Under the word research, it's all explained, and that's where you sign up. I'm Ira. Have a great weekend.